Hey everybody, God bless. I hope everyone's doing well today. Um, you guys pray every day that you would be given, pray that you be given a desire uh, to pray and a desire to live holy and that the Lord would be your joy. Just as Mary said when she said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. You know, pray that you be given these spiritual gifts because you guys with with what we are born into, um, you know, you really have to be reborn, and you have to use the sp you have to use uh, the spirit of Christ to renew and rejuvenate and renew your body, and use your authority, and you have to resist Satan, and then he will flee from you. And um, so I was looking at. Um, sister Lena's video this morning and she brings up some really good points that I wanted to talk about it and of course go check out the video um, on her channel but I wrote a couple things down that I wanted to talk about um, and she was talking about she brings up such a good scripture that I think so many Christians are um, they're not taking it into consideration or they're taking this and they're not, yeah, they're not just applying it. And this is the excuse they give. And I'll say it after I'm done. It's uh, in Luke and it says, Love your enemies and do good to those who persecute you. Bless those who curse you. And um, you guys, for instance, there's a guy, at, he comes in and uh, at my work and he does not like me. He just, the spirit in him does not like who I am in Christ and he doesn't like Christ and so he'll say like mean and that he'll like make fun of me and like he'll say nasty things to me but you know so most people you know they would be like oh I'll forget that guy and they would say all sorts of curses and all bad things about him you know but instead of doing that i'm doing what the scripture says and loving him and blessing him you know sending him a blessing at the end of my um encounter with him i say god bless you sir you know and praying for him at night you know this is what we are called to do okay this is what differentiates us from the enemy okay this is what differentiates those who are christ and those who say that they're in Christ, but they're really not. Now, going back to scripture, love your enemies and do good to those who persecute you. Bless those who curse you. Um, so, you guys, um, people, when, when we say that um, we're supposed to love people, right? We're supposed to love God with all our being and love even our enemies, right people use this excuse many christians even in our community in fact most of them they say well jesus this was a jesus that turned up the tables in the temple right and um and i understand what you're saying but you do not know who the pharisees were the pharisees and the sadducees okay you guys the pharisees and the sadducees were not deceived people. They were people that knew who God was, they know what the scriptures say, but they wanted to steal His glory, okay? They wanted people, like with the things that the Sadducees and Pharisees did, they wanted people around them to glorify them. That's what made, that would, you guys, it was like, it's pretty much like a modern day Luciferian. It's, it's very similar mentality, okay? And so, you guys mostly aren't dealing with people like that. Just because somebody makes you mad does not uh, mean that you should use the scripture, oh, Jesus turned up the tables in the temple to justify because somebody rubbed you the wrong way to be harsh to them you are if you are in christ if you are really in the body of christ okay because there's different groups of people 
and where they're at at different levels of spirituality and in their walk with Christ, um, then you are called to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Okay? So, remember when Jesus said, Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do when those men were nailing him to the cross? The Sadducees and the Pharisees were a totally different thing. And you guys, we are dealing with people who are deceived. They're under deception. Okay, that does not, you cannot put them in the same boat as the Sadducees and Pharisees. Okay, so, um, if you want to know about God's love towards humanity and towards us, go read the book of Hosea. Okay, and it's about a man who is married, who is in love and married to a prostitute, and how he figures out how to redeem her and bring her back from, um, I think she gets arrested or something like that. But, um, and then Lena says, she brings up so many good points in this video. She says, okay, it says, once saved, always saved. Oh, yeah, people people who think in their minds, like, oh, I just have to believe in and on Jesus Christ. And then when the day happens, I'll just going to call out his name. And then, he, uh, and then he's going to come save me. You guys, it has to be done through your actions. Okay? Lena, when you listen to her in this video, she says people think one thing, that they're saved and that they're Christians in their mind, but then as soon as they get out of church, they go live another life. They fall back into their sins. As soon as they're pulling out to the parking lot, they're getting mad at somebody because they got cut off um, out on the road. As soon as they leave the church parking lot. And so what that saying, what that is saying is it's by your actions, okay? You can, you can say in your mind, oh, I love that person, but do you really love them? If God were to examine your heart, is your love really unconditional for that person? Or do you get mad at them when they do something wrong to you, even if you were right? And see, these are the things you have to ask yourself. Those are the people who are truly in Christ. And you guys, most people who are Christians do not understand this stuff yet, okay? And this is what the tribulation is for. They have not, God loves them, but he's going to give them another chance to die for the name of Jesus Christ so that they can get their robes, so that they can get their attire. When Jesus was being crucified, the only people that were up there was Mary Magdalene, Mary his mother, and John. Not John the Baptist, he'd already died. John the disciple. And he said, as Jesus was dying, he said, Son, behold thy mother. Mother, behold thy son. John was the one who... At the Last Supper, he laid his head on Jesus' uh, shoulder or his chest. So he really, you guys, he was a very, um, this was the same John who wanted to call down fire and lightning, or thunder and lightning, or something, the fire from heaven, onto the town that rejected Jesus. And so, Jesus named him and his brother, Sons of Thunder. And then you see months or years later, I'm not sure, that he's laying his, sh his head on Jesus Christ. He had really let the Spirit of Christ transform his heart. But Peter, when Jesus was being arrested, Peter didn't understand it yet. And he pulled out his sword and he cut off the guard's ear. So Peter still had a problem with his temper and with anger. Peter said, no, we won't let them come and arrest you. But that's what God's plan was for Jesus, so that he could redeem mankind. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. 
So, I guess the, um, well, not a guess, but the, the point, the biggest point in this video is let the Spirit of Christ transform your heart. Love your enemies. Do good to those who persecute you. And bless those who curse you. Amen.